This video will cover the basic theory and operation of oscilloscopes like this one. Although this video specifically uses this oscilloscope that we use in the DDL, all of this information will be applicable to any oscilloscope with some minor cosmetic changes like where the buttons are. Before we talk about the oscilloscope, let's just look at a simple voltmeter like this, which shows the voltage across its leads. For example, if I connect the leads to this battery, this battery has a voltage of approximately 9 volts. Similarly, if I connect it to the power supply on the cadet, it shows a voltage of approximately 5 volts, which is what you use for your protoboards in the lab. This is an oscilloscope. Just like a voltmeter, it measures the voltage across its two probes, the ground, which looks like an alligator clip, and the signal, which is this retractable hook. If I connect the meter and the oscilloscope so that they're measuring the same thing, then once again, measuring the voltage on the battery, both the meter and the oscilloscope show that this battery has a voltage of about 9 volts. And as before, measuring the voltage of the power supply shows a voltage of approximately 5 volts. The one thing that the oscilloscope shows that the voltmeter doesn't is the history of the signal that it's measured. For example, as I disconnect and connect this 9 volt battery, the history of the measurement scrolls across the screen. Instead of manually connecting and disconnecting a voltage source, we can use the signal generator on the cadet to output a square wave. Again, connecting both the voltmeter and the oscilloscope, if I attach it to the clock signal on the cadet, you can see that the signal now is very slowly changing from 0 volts up to about 4.5 volts. Keep in mind that the voltage itself only has one value at any point in time. What's being shown on the oscilloscope is the history of the measurement. Besides the benefit of being able to view the signal's history, the oscilloscope is also much, much faster. For example, if I increase this frequency, the voltmeter already has trouble tracking the signal. However, the signal is perfectly visible on the oscilloscope. Let's take a look at the oscilloscope and how it displays signals. The waveform being displayed on the oscilloscope can be scaled in the vertical or horizontal direction. Currently, the vertical scale is 1 volt per division, meaning that each of these divisions on the screen represents 1 volt. That means that the signal being displayed right now takes up a little bit less than 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half divisions. Four and a half divisions times one volt per division means that this signal has a peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of about four and a half volts, which is typical for TTL signals. We can adjust the vertical scale in either direction using the vertical scale knob. For example, if I change the scale to two volts per division, the signal becomes smaller, which would allow us to view signals with higher voltages or to fit multiple waveforms on the screen. By going the other direction to 500 millivolts per division, this signal no longer fits on the screen. However, this would allow us to view signals with lower voltages or to look at more detail in the lower voltages. One volt per division is a reasonable scale for this signal. We can also adjust the time scale. For example, by sampling more slowly, we can view more history, but we get less detail. By sampling more quickly, we can see more detail in the signal, but we get less history. What time scale is appropriate depends on the signal and what feature of the signal we're interested in. As we look at faster signals, here I've increased the frequency again, we need to increase the sampling speed, but very quickly the signal starts scrolling across the screen too quickly for us to make out any features. That's why, past a certain point, the oscilloscope stops scrolling the display and instead just shows us snapshots of the signal's history. The idea is still the same. The oscilloscope is recording the voltage over some time, but now it records a screen's worth of data and then displays it all at once. This presents a problem, though. The oscilloscope is taking snapshots at random times relative to the period of the waveform, so the display seems to jump back and forth. What we really want is to trigger each snapshot based on a feature of the waveform. The easiest waveform feature for an oscilloscope to detect is when the signal crosses a voltage threshold. This is called an edge trigger. On most oscilloscopes, the trigger's threshold voltage is displayed as a small arrow on the side of the screen. 
Here you can see the voltage threshold is set too low. Since the waveform never crosses the threshold, the oscilloscope isn't triggering and instead is in free running mode. However, as soon as I move the trigger voltage up to a level that the signal crosses, the oscilloscope will place each occurrence of that feature at the position indicated by this arrow on the bottom of the screen. It's important to remember that the display is still showing snapshots of this signal's history. The only reason that the waveform looks static is because it is perfectly periodic and the oscilloscope is placing each acquisition at the same place on the screen. If I change the signal, or disconnect it entirely, you can see that the display is still updating with recent information. In addition to horizontal and vertical scaling, the signal display can also be moved up, down, left, and right using the horizontal and vertical position knobs. For example, I can move the signal higher on the display or lower on the display, and I can move the signal to the left or to the right. Always keep in mind that the trigger position is indicated by this arrow on the bottom of the screen. On this oscilloscope, pressing the horizontal delay button will reset the position to the center of the screen. It's important to watch the trigger position because if you scroll the display too far, the trigger position will move off of the screen. This means that the oscilloscope is no longer triggering on a feature visible on the screen, which can cause problems with the waveform jumping back and forth. If you see that the trigger marker has moved to the side of the screen and become an arrow pointing to the side, you should press the horizontal position knob to reset the display to the center of the screen. One important thing to point out is that right now the oscilloscope is triggering on a rising edge of the waveform. That means that this rising edge can be viewed as closely as we want and still stay perfectly in the center of the screen. However, if we wanted to view the falling edge of this waveform, it's tempting to try to scroll the display all the way over to the falling edge to try to get a look at it. You can see that this would take forever, and in general, it's a bad idea. Instead, keep the trigger position in the center of the screen and enter the trigger setup menu. This menu allows you to select a negative trigger edge. By selecting the negative trigger edge, the oscilloscope will instead trigger on the falling edge of the waveform, place that edge in the center of the screen, and then you can zoom in as much as you want. Those basic concepts, triggering on the feature that you're interested in, and then zooming and scrolling the display to get that feature in an appropriate place on the waveform screen, are the main concepts that you need to understand in order to measure signals such as the ones found in the Digital Design Lab.